uh, scientific and uh, versions, alternative versions of the literary tradition, and an unease about using this word, which uh, is there before you get to what can properly be called the theoretical argument. As uh, a historian of meanings, uh, I find it very curious when one is in the intricacies of theory that we should trip over so simple a historical uh, tangle. Thank you. Sometimes people were impatient that one wasn't getting through to what were called the fundamental issues, but some of the fundamental issues were the process mm -hmm. of getting through. I mean, I don't know whether you'd agree with that, but... Yes, sometimes it's, it's a difference in, in emphasis. I mean, the, yeah. same, the same sentence, which l sounds intelligible, uh, it's not, is not intelligible because uh, one is, uh, is, putting, is putting the, the emphasis on, on a certain word or a certain value of the word and another one uh, on, the, on another. Yes, uh, the, 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 the frames of reference and allusion which one doesn't even realize one's taking for, for granted. Mm -hmm. The other thing, I mean, is simply this factor of selection in what one knows if one has made the effort of another discipline or another writer or another tendency. Because, again, in this matter of movement between cultures, there's a very complex process of selection. I mean, take something as apparently natural as how books are selected for translation. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole history of Russian formalism and its successors could be written not only in terms of a movement of intellectual ideas of great importance, but in what look at first sight like accidents of translation at particular date or of failures to translate, of the order in which these things appeared, so that earlier stages of the argument appeared before the later stages. Mm -hmm. And this whole question, if we are talking about international exchange, I think we have to become very m much more conscious of those processes which, in a way, are the material that we're studying. And this is my point in quoting it. As a challenge to certain tendencies in applied linguistics and to forms of literary analysis seemingly derived from them, which have appropriated a selective version of modernism, and within this an internal and self-proving definition of the avant-garde, as a way of ratifying their own much narrower positions and procedures. What happened was that a different generation, uh, graduate students, young teachers and so on, began reading these works in the original language. They created a market for them. They were then published without reference to the academy. The academy then saw this as a subversive movement to undermine its own authority. And on the other hand, they could sometimes often say that a mere fashion was started by a particular press yes. publicizing a certain tendency, and this was just, but it would have been more acceptable if there hadn't been that kind of lag and blockage and exercise of power in the first place. Yeah, on that one, I would just say a word as, as a, a Frenchman speaking uh, <laughs> uh, English with uh, much difficulty, uh, a word on the power and the authority not only of the English language, yeah. uh, but on the, of the American uh, yes. culture and market on, on, from the point of view. For instance, uh, I was, I think, the, the only French here, but I had to speak English, of course, because the English was the dominant language. Uh, uh, could I speak French? Uh, we charge the constructionism with being irrationalist. But I had the feeling that I was invited here to the extent that the United States have legitimized uh, yeah. my work. Yeah. So everything, every legitimation has to go through uh, the United States, to, to the American Academy. Yeah. And this, is, this confirms the authority, the author, the authority of the English language all over the world, I mean, in scientific yes. and um, in scholarship in general, and the authority of the uh, North American uh, uh, market and, and uh, academic power. And of course, this could be, or has been, implicitly at least, uh, a topic uh, in our conference. I think it was there, and it mm -hmm. was a tension. It's often difficult to express because 
British and American academics tend to meet quite often, to know each other well, they're friendly and polite, but between the cultures there's this tension, and it's not only a matter of the language, I mean, it's yeah. probably a more extreme case, but there is an area now of legitimation by North American culture of mm -hmm. the British culture at every level, including the commercial, very obviously. And uh, what happens then is the process of internal adjustment. I know people in this culture who are no longer oriented towards this culture or t towards Europe, but towards what is likely to be legitimated. I, mm -hmm. Often, fortunately, they get it wrong, mm -hmm. but likely to be legitimated in North American culture mm -hmm. now. This is not the neutral process of no. recognition by one's peers. Nothing is neutral in this, in this uh, <laughs> right. field. Uh, I had the feeling to it that, uh, from this point of view, that the tension between s a part of the uh, English intelligentsia and a part of the, the American intelligentsia, this tension was stronger than between a part of the, of the American Academy and a part of the French Academy. The dialogue or the, the translation, let, let's use this word in a broad sense, the translation between French uh, in intellectual life and American intellectual life is easier than between American and English intellectual life and, of course, French and English. French and, and partly, the worst is between French and English. Partly uh, because a very important like continental European emigration went to the United States, which made the familiarity with those traditions more acceptable. In those ways, the English reaction was merely, this is probably one, was merely one provincial. Um, on the other hand, uh, one hears denunciations, not always frivolous here, of uh, a kind of Franco-American intellectual hegemony, which uh, is precisely um, seen in this process we were earlier describing. It's not like that. But when this interacts, as it does, with all sorts of political tensions, cultural tensions, and so on, it's mm -hmm. the, the, the only thing is, is, is the recognition and a very frank examination of it because mm -hmm. it is very complex. Mm -hmm.